Hello, PodFam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I am good, Laura. How are you today? I am fantastic. I motivated myself to go to kickboxing this evening. Nice. Even though I really didn't want to, I really just wanted to curl up in my bed with mm-hmm. One Tree Hill and a bag of chips. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited because I'm looking forward to two days off. I love that. I know. So for our listeners, it's Wednesday and I'm taking Thursday, Friday off from work and I'm just really excited to just be offline. Um, Like work has slowed down a little bit lately, but I really just Mm -hmm. feel like I want to just step away, have some me time and relax. And with that, I am having a massage tomorrow morning. Oh. That sounds amazing. I'm so jealous. So excited for that. And then on Friday, I'm spending the day with my dad and my sister. So lots to look forward to this week. How about you? How are you doing? I am good. Work also has slowed down a little bit for me. And I am not taking a few days off, unfortunately. I would really love an extended weekend. And I don't know about you, but just it feels like it's slowing down because the holidays are coming up. Yes. But I'm also just sitting there and I'm like, but when is the other shoe going to drop? When is it going to go to shit? (laughs) We're getting kicked in high gear soon. I can feel it. But hopefully we can enjoy the holidays and then we kick in high gear again. Yes. So I also uh, somehow motivated myself to do a little workout. I did a 28 minute, 28 minutes exactly yoga session with yoga with adrian she is fantastic oh i love her she's fun yeah to any of our listeners if by some chance you don't know who yoga with adrian is check her out on youtube she's fantastic yeah another one you should check out is action jacqueline okay she's kind of similar to yoga with adrian um just like Mm -hmm. super fun workouts not too long like she's got some where you can go like 15 minutes or Mm -hmm. 30 minutes 45 minutes but I think she'd be your style so like nice yeah you should definitely check her out yeah I think I do because I've definitely I like I love yoga with Adrienne for like the 30 day challenge that she does at the beginning of every year but I did that last year so I really I really spun through a lot of her videos so I just need something a bit different until that 30 day challenge comes up but let me tell you it was a fight to get myself up and prepared for this workout today. And how I won out against myself was that I just decided that um, we were just going to work out in my comfy sweater and sweatpants. Hey, you know what? When it comes to yoga, why not? Stay comfortable. Exactly. So I think I made the right call and uh, it was nice. So I'm really glad that I did it. And then I, uh, before we started to record i was getting caught up on some one tree hill excellent it's the episode um right after oh don't spoil it for anyone yeah i know but I, just for <laughs> reference for you it's the episode right after season three episode 16 that's like very dark yeah and this one is also very depressing and i'm just like laura why did you introduce me to this show <laughs> but can you stop watching it no it's actually a problem there's two episodes that we have to watch together, so you can't go beyond those. Yeah, exactly. Season four. So we can binge for like probably the next week or two, and then we'll come back together. Awesome. Well, what are you having to drink this evening? I'm going for a classic this evening. I Yeah? Yeah, one of my, my all-time favorites, peppermint tea. Oh, so nice. I yes. almost had a peppermint tea tonight, too. Oh, nice. I had a little like freak out before mm-hmm. because um I couldn't find it no because because I have so much tea and like I have like some upstairs some downstairs and like I'm like rifling through everything can't find the peppermint but like I really wanted peppermint mm-hmm. um so thank god I found it it was just kind of like caught behind another bag and yeah. so kind of stuck together but it's okay I've got my peppermint what are you drinking though I have a puer tea called cookie dough. Mm. Yeah, it's an interesting one? I kind of like picked that one for you on a whim because I really just wanted to know what it would taste like. Yeah, 
I like thought it was going to be sweeter. It smells very sweet, like almost to a point where I'm like, uh, I don't know about this. But it definitely, I, I honestly don't know. I, it, the jury is out on this one. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to like, I think I need like a pot of it and then really get used to sipping it. But it has a very puer vibe to it. Yeah, well, and that's kind of the good thing about the puer teas where like something will seem very sweet. Like I've got um, mm-hmm. gingerbread that I that I really like. Um, yeah. But the puer tea, it kind of makes it more earthy and mellow. So I find it like takes yeah. away a bit of the sweetness. Yeah, I think that's what's happening is it, I would say that it's very earthy, but it still has, you know, it's not as sweet as the maple cinnamon waffles that I've been right. having. I do love right. that one though. Oh, so good. I really do feel like just bringing out like a ginger tea again, but I feel like I had been um, on the ginger and peppermint tea train for so long that I need to pay my dues with like something else for well and I find for like winter time now because it like there's there's been some snow on the ground so we can say you know it's don't talk about it I'm still we (laughs) we have a little taste of winter right now and that's when like the darker and richer teas come out for me especially just because they're just so soothing and warm Mm -hmm. um I just have that like rich flavor it's like drinking red wine in the winter time versus like white in the summer Yeah, I've been finding that. Yeah, no, I agree. And speaking of the winter months, because we uh, had 10 centimeters of snow two days ago, we are going to be having um, an episode that's related to winter. Are you excited? Am I excited about the episode or about winter? Uh, Both. Let's, let's, Let's share your thoughts on both. Ah, Well, episode, always excited. But winter, mmm. (laughs) <laughs> I like the snow. Like nothing yep. is better than, you know, fresh powder snowfall overnight. Yes. Because um, it's so pretty in the morning when it's, it's like It's so untouched. beautiful. And like there's like clear blue sky and it's sunny and it's like cold, but, you know, not like brutally cold that mm-hmm. we sometimes get here. And those are the days I love in winter. But realistically speaking – Mm -hmm. What we deal with is a lot of slush. Yep. A lot of minus 30. Don't talk about Um, it. I'm not prepared. (laughs) I'm not prepared for that part. Yeah. We deal with a lot of ice, a lot of freezing rain. And that is the stuff that like, uh, it's just, it goes on for too long. Mm -hmm. Um, I love snow for Christmas and for New Year's. And then after that, I'm like, okay, back to spring, you know, like, you're like, I'm done. You're like, yep, I am done. Yeah, so that's kind of like my thoughts on winter. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I am. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, basically, our our master plan as we age is to live in Canada for the summer months, which is like you know March to October, and then move to New Zealand for October through March, like you know November through February kind of thing so that we're basically Mm -hmm. in summer the whole time because I just I can't I can't do this for the rest of my life (laughs) no I just and I find the older I get the The more the cold affects me like Mm -hmm. I remember being a kid like oh I wouldn't wear a hat I have no mitts I have no scarf I'd be like whatever I'm good and like now if it's like zero or less Mm -hmm. out I'm like oh my god I need like my giant full length parka that I that I bring out for like you know the minus 25 days Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you like kind of walk around feeling like the Michelin man yeah yeah and I don't get out of that jacket until about April yeah I was feeling that way yesterday when I went for a walk after work because I was wearing like three sweaters and then my jacket and some mitts and stuff and I like was walking around like one of those little kids in snowsuits just like stumbling (laughs) all over the place so yeah it's been a great time but one thing that tends to come with the winter months is the winter blues oh yes oh yes have you experienced the winter blues Laura at some point in your life I think in periods of my life I definitely Mm -hmm. have Um, And we're going to kind of like get a definition going about the different types you may be experiencing. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, a disclaimer, we are not professionals in this area. 
mm-hmm. at all. So please, 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 if you feel like you need to speak to someone, definitely reach out to a licensed professional. Mm-hmm. Um, today, we're just kind of like laying some ground rules of like what this is all about and then offering some tips. Mm-hmm. But again, we are not professionals. These are just things that we have done yep. or have found other people have done. So please definitely seek help if you feel like you need it or if there's someone you know who might need professional help. Mm-hmm. And that probably is a good segue into the distinction between just the blanket term winter blues and seasonal affective disorder, which most people call sad. So the winter blues, what it's characterized as is basically you just feel sad during the fall and winter months. You might have some trouble sleeping and you just have like a general lack of motivation and fatigue. You're just tired, you know, where seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression that usually will come about in the early fall. There are actually some cases where you can have it almost in the reverse, where it's in the summer, which is super interesting. Yeah, I came across that too. I I find that very interesting because, I mean, Mm -hmm. most people only talk about the fall winter months. So I'd be interested to see like if there are people who who are affected by the spring and the summer. I would – like okay, I'm kind of speaking out of term here, but like – Possibly if you're someone who really can't handle the heat yeah. and like humidity, I could definitely understand that. Mm-hmm. So if any listeners are kind of experiencing that, um, I would definitely love to learn more if you want to DM us on the Instagram. Yeah. I, I wonder if it's a genetic thing too, just of what your genetic makeup is, especially possibly. from like ancestral genes that have been passed down. That would be super interesting to know about. So yeah, let us know because – We're talking about the winter sad, unfortunately. (laughs) So basically, the the main difference is that with sad, you're experiencing symptoms of major depressive disorder. So with that, some distinctive symptoms that are different from just the winter blues is that it's the sadness that you experience is typically very severe. You'll have frequent sleep and eating issues. So that could be insomnia or you're sleeping too much. Say you're putting on a lot of weight or you're not eating enough or you're eating too much by compared to what you normally do. And it limits your normal function and motivation. So it's like you, even though with um, just like those general winter blues, it might be harder for you to get the motivation up to work out, but you can get yourself there. This is like you literally just don't want to do it. Yeah. So that's that's an important distinction because sad or seasonal affective disorder is something that you get diagnosed with and you do need to go to a professional about. So if you feel like you're experiencing any of those symptoms, please, please, please go talk to somebody. But a lot of people, just because we're human, we do experience those winter blues because there's a significant lack of sunlight. So you know, as my naturopath said, a lot of it is just a lot of vitamin D deficiency. Right. And that makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, we mm-hmm. live in Canada. Yes. Um, so we get a full season of winter. We also experience, you know, daylight savings time. I mean, mm-hmm. right now we're not even close to uh, December 21st and mm-hmm. it's getting dark at 4.30 yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, so definitely, you know, for people who live in like the more northern climates, our days get very short. So, yep. you know, we're not getting out as much, especially when we throw in, you know, school and work. A lot of the time, you know, it's it's dark when you get up and it's dark when you come home. So especially if you don't go is, for walks during the day. like Yeah, you, especially when you don't go for walks during the day. And, you know, just as little as like 15 minutes out in the sunshine mm-hmm. can help lift your mood. Mm-hmm. But for a lot of people, that's just not possible. No, especially during the day, freezing. (laughs) Yeah, it's cold out, so like you really don't want to go out, and or if it's storming, and then just in general, like we're busy during Mm -hmm. the day, so it it can be really hard just to take a few minutes out of your day to uh, to get outside in the sunshine. Yeah. So before we jump into some preventative tips and also tips to work with the winter blues, I just wanted to run through some fun facts for you. Are you excited? I'm excited. Great. So 
For seasonal affective disorder in particular, it usually starts in young adulthood. And I always really found this interesting that it's more common in women than men. Yeah, that is interesting. I I wonder, is that just like our makeup, our hormones? Like, I'm sure there's a lot going on. Yeah. And when I was doing more of the research, it seemed like, uh, because the exact cause, like they don't really know what it is. But it seemed like majority of their theories related to hormones. So I feel like that could definitely be part of it. So a couple of those reasons are that the shorter days just has a big impact on your circadian rhythm. It just throws your body out of whack and it's not really sure what's going on. Your serotonin levels are dropping. And this one I found was super interesting actually because it said that the um, levels of melatonin in your body will actually get overproduced. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, but it it says that that's what would cause that sleepiness and sluggishness. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I thought that that was interesting because it's like, you know how we've been talking recently where even though you're waking up in a normal time as you usually would, you're just like, I'm just tired. Yeah. And I was just going to ask you, you know, do your, uh, not sleep patterns change, but like the time that you go to bed and the time that you wake up, does mm-hmm. that change between summertime and wintertime for you? A bit. I would say that I usually wake up around – I have to wake up around the same time, but I can bounce out of bed at 6.37 in the summer very easily. Mm-hmm. But right now, like, I will keep snoozing my alarm until 7.30, 7.45. Like, nothing I can do about it. I just won't get up. Um, and I do find that I don't necessarily go to bed earlier in the winter, but I get tired a lot earlier. Like it feels like it's bedtime at six. Yeah, I'm very much the same. Um, you know, in the summertime, I'm horse showing a lot of the time. So Mm -hmm. I am up at like 4 a.m., which, you know, some days that is never easy, Mm -hmm. but even at 4 a.m., by the time you get to like 5 a.m., 5.30, and you're yeah. really up and going, you know, the sun is already starting to come up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I find that so much easier yeah. where in the wintertime, like, oh, my God, if I have to be up before mm-hmm. 7.30, 8 o'clock even right now, just from like working from home, that's yeah. definitely changed my sleep schedule because I just don't have to be up, um, up and commuting anywhere right now, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um I find it so much harder because it's just dark. It's cold. The last thing I want to do is get it from under my nice warm covers. Yep. And then same as you, I I almost feel like maybe I sleep less in the summertime. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that way too. Yeah. Because like there have been times where I'm like still out doing things at like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the summertime because mm-hmm. it's still bright out. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of like t- almost takes me longer to wind down. Yeah. Where in the winter time, it's just like, oh, by the time I get going, do mm-hmm. my day, and then it's dark again. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like ready to chill. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't leave the house. I don't leave the house after seven. <laughs> no, I would never think about it. Like if I need to go out and do anything, I better do it right after work or else it's it's not happening. Yeah. I agree with you because like even now we've been trying to go to the gym once a week just with our current schedules. Yeah. And I've just come to this conclusion that like if I have enough time to sit down when I get home from work, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, that is so true. And like what I've been doing. So, you know, I usually work till about 4.30, quarter to 5. Mm-hmm. And around 4 o'clock or 4.15, I will actually go change into my gym clothes. Yeah. So then I can immediately be like, okay, sign off computer, get in car and go. Yeah. Um, where today, why I struggled is, you know, I was done at 4.30, quarter to 5 as normal. Mm-hmm. And I had to then go change. But I couldn't find my sports bra that I wanted to wear. And I had no. to like sift through clean laundry and I was just like well I might as well fold this laundry and put it away Mm -hmm. and so then it's like five o'clock I'm still not dressed Mm -hmm. um and then my boyfriend comes down and we're just kind of like chilling hanging out and um then it's quarter after five yeah and he's like aren't you going 
to kickboxing tonight? I'm like, oh, I really don't want to. And he's just like, well, don't go if you don't want to. I'm like, no, I need to go. Like, I need to go. You're <laughs> so, like, let me complain in peace. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to just complain about it. But it took me so much longer. So that's like one little thing that I find helps is like mm-hmm. if I'm prepared to literally get up from my computer and leave – Mm-hmm. then I'm still on a good roll. But like, if I don't do that, oh my gosh, it's so hard it's just a to battle. get myself going again. Yeah. I just feel like because it doesn't even like slowly get dark, it's just it's 4.30 and then it's nighttime. It's literally just like, oh, and now it's night. Yeah. The last cause was vitamin D deficiency, which I have definitely had drilled into me by my naturopath for like my entire young adult life. Because she always gets mad at me because I'll walk in and I'll be like, I'm feeling kind of sad with the winter. And she's like, are you taking the vitamin D that I tell you to take every winter? And I'm like, no. (laughs) And she's just like, well, maybe you should try that. (laughs) One year you will learn. (laughs) I know. I actually am taking it. um, I started taking at the beginning of November and it actually is helping a lot. So I'm like, wow, maybe there's something to this. What a shocker. (laughs) What a shocker. The person who it's literally her job to know this stuff was correct. So yeah, basically that just happens because even when the sun is up, it's not as bright and stuff. It's just yeah, sad. Yeah, even um, I've noticed just like from having to be on Zoom calls and everything, mm-hmm. um, like just where the sun is in the sky and like I've got a really big window at the front of my living room. Yeah. Um, and normally like there's a lot of natural light. Yeah. But for the past like month or so now – um, especially since the time change, I've had to bring in another lamp mm-hmm. on my desk mm-hmm. just to kind of like give me more light because I feel like even at like noon, if I'm mm-hmm. on a call, it feels so dark in my house. Yeah, it freaks me out. We really are just house plants. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> I work in a sunroom. So I have like windows all around. So I kind of get the sun at whichever angle. And I'm just like, when I'm not working in there, it's like a dark day and stuff. I'm like, I'm sad. But on a really sunny day, I'm like, wow. I know. It's like life is great. (laughs) Life is great. I'm so happy. And yeah, it's really, um, we are very complex but simple creatures. Yeah. We just need, you know, food, water, sun. (laughs) Pretty much. Pretty much. So shall we jump into some tips to help prevent or just combat the winter blues? Absolutely. And I think like let's start with the vitamin D because I feel like this is just like a really simple thing for people to add into their routine. Mm -hmm. I know uh, like you, Rachel, you already said that it's something that you do during the winter time and I actually do as well just to give my body a little bit of a boost. Yeah. Yeah, Like I don't notice a huge difference with it, but I also don't get too much of the winter blues. Yeah. You just don't experience it as much. Yeah. Like it's, it's never hit me that hard and whatever, like that's just how I am. But I've always kind of thought like, you know, I'm definitely, especially now as like an adult, Mm -hmm. um, I'm not outside as much as I used to be. Yeah. So just knowing that like I do need some sunshine, that's why I take it. Yeah, I kind of felt the same way. I felt like for a long time it didn't really do much for me either, but I was a bit sporadic with how I would take it. And I think as well too, um, you have to pair that vitamin D with eating. Yes. Because my diet has changed a lot ever since my partner and I moved in. We've basically been eating like vegetarians. Which has been actually very interesting because whenever I've taken supplements before, whether it's vitamin D or not, it didn't seem like my body would absorb it. But for some reason with like this vegetarian diet, I'm absorbing it all. So Oh, that's interesting. That That's like just an interesting little sub fact there. Do with it what you will. But sometimes it's like you do have to match the vitamin D with the diet that makes you feel the best. So. Yeah, because I believe there I'm I'm drawing a complete blank right now, but there is there is a vitamin that pairs well with D three, and they kind of like help the absorption mm-hmm. of of the other one. Yeah. Um, and now this is just kind of like a side question for you. Yeah, but do you like eat seasonally? I think we've probably talked about oh, this yeah. before, but 
That was literally one of my points. (laughs) Yeah. Like, do you find um, like your meals are a little bit heavier now in the wintertime versus the summertime? Yes. So that literally that just ties in so perfectly because the point that I was going to say was that, you know, make sure you're still eating healthy, but let yourself enjoy those hearty and warm foods if you want them as opposed to like forcing yourself to still eat the salad because like I don't know about you but I don't want salad ever I honestly like I have I haven't had salad in probably a month or two Mm -hmm. only because like I find it so cold Mm -hmm. to my system yeah um now I'm not like not eating vegetables. I eat lots of vegetables, but mm-hmm. I've definitely switched over to like um, lots of steamed vegetables. Um, yeah, you know, I've actually been eating a lot of guacamole lately, nice. but that's just that's just kind of me. Um, yeah. But I put in very like warming things mm-hmm. like uh, you know peppers and and garlic. Yeah. So I still kind of get that same feeling of like, oh, okay, it's heating up my body. Yeah. Where if you were to give me like spinach. I would be like, I'm hungry and cold. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so I think it's super important. And like lots of dietitians recommend like, you know, you kind of eat seasonally Mm -hmm. for your area. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, like squash, carrots, uh, anything like that. And I find it's just – it just tends to be a little bit heavier. And I don't know maybe how we prepare it Mm -hmm. in in our culture. So, yeah, I definitely feel a little bit more like slow – Mm-hmm. After I eat in the winter time versus like in the summertime, you know, you just have, have lighter salad. meals. Yeah. yeah, like you can like have salad with chicken or you know salad with steak, something like that. And it's mm-hmm. just like, oh, okay, your body like processes that mm-hmm. a little faster. I'm literally like obsessed with parsnips in the winter. Oh, parsnips! Yes, I love I a good love parsnip. Parsnips and like, oh, yeah, they are really good. Yeah. So one thing like that turn up. Yeah. Oh, there's so many good things. <laughs> so good. I, I I love winter eating. I don't really like the eating in the summer. <laughs> I know. I mean, like winter it's kind of boring. It's so comforting. It's so comforting. Like I made roast beef this evening with like mm-hmm. some vegetables and I was going to do potatoes, but I just was kind of pressed for time. Yeah. This evening. So instead we um, had some like uh, buttered sourdough. Mm-hmm. And then we put the roast beef on top and nice. then like poured poured the um, – it wasn't quite gravy. It was just like the au jus from uh, the roast beef. Mm-hmm. So it was just a hearty, warm meal. Am I moving Delicious. like at snail pace? Yes, I am. <laughs> but, but you'll feel great tomorrow. You know what? I am warm and I'm cozy mm-hmm. and I'm just feeling like my body just wants to slow down and rest. So that's what we're doing. Yeah. So another one that ties in very nicely, well, it not ties in, but it goes pretty hand in hand with taking the vitamin D supplements, and that's the light therapy that uh, practitioners will recommend. Oh, so yeah. I don't know exactly how I feel about the light therapy because I have tried it in the past when I was like really going through it with the blues in the winter. Um, now, Rachel, sorry to interrupt, mm-hmm. but... Is this like a special kind of light? Like was it a red light therapy or was it more like um, just like like the bright light? So I don't really remember exactly, but it's like kind of those sun lamps. Yeah. So you just like turn it on and you just sit directly with it in your face. Right. I personally would recommend, not that I am in any place to recommend, at least for me, I like the vitamin D supplements more. I just found the light therapy. I wasn't particularly sure what it was doing. And it also felt like a bit of a time killer. Yeah. And I feel like it's it's one of those things where um it's probably like good to pair up because I actually I I like the light therapy. So I'm kind of glad that we have differing opinions here. Um Um, so my dad I like I think he is definitely one who is affected by the cold Mm -hmm. a lot like oh my god if he could live in you know 30 degree days every day he'd be a happy guy he would just love that yeah he is not about the cold at all never has been and at his desk he has one of the the sunlights 
Okay. And um, he'll turn it on like for, I don't know. I think I think you have to work your way up depending on the mm-hmm. kind of light mm-hmm. that it is. And um, yeah, like he just kind of turns it on at his desk mm-hmm. when he's working and he mm-hmm. just finds it kind of like helps lift him up a little bit just because it is so dark and cold. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's almost like a mind game. Yeah. For people. It could be. Yeah. Like I don't know if the light itself is like – it's not obviously giving off like UV sun rays mm-hmm. um, and warmth. Well, some some might give off a little bit of heat, mm-hmm. but I think it's more just to trick your brain. And I actually have a sunrise alarm mm-hmm. clock, which I love. And the funny thing is I don't use it in the summertime. That's interesting. Yeah, because I wake up with the sun. Mm-hmm. And I go to bed with the sun. Mm-hmm. Where in the winter time, I find I really do need it because my boyfriend he loves like a dark room, yeah, to sleep in. Like he is in, you know, the blackout curtains, everything likes it yeah. dark. And for me, if you make me sleep in that kind of environment, I won't wake up. Yeah, or like I'll wake up, but I won't be able to get going. Mm-hmm. Because my brain and my body is just like, um, it's the middle of the night. <laughs> you should be sleeping. Yeah. Uh, where with my my sunlight, my sunrise alarm clock that I have, it is on a timer. So for like half an hour, it mm-hmm. slowly gets brighter and brighter. And nice. then once it's at its brightest, it, you know, goes off of the alarm clock. But nice. it's less jarring. Like mm-hmm. I don't understand how people can like wake up with their iPhone alarm clock and it's just like that really aggressive ringtone it terrifies Um, me every time yeah like I feel like whenever I wake up that way like my body starts with a jolt Mm -hmm. and it's just like oh like I'm like offended (laughs) by it like like, body literally yeah like my my body is just like oh I don't like this Mm -hmm. like it's just offensive where with the sunrise alarm clock you know it's very gradual Mm -hmm. and by the time the alarm clock actually goes off for you to get up your body's already kind of like, mm, okay, like the start of the day, like I can get moving and going. Mm-hmm. Um, it also has the opposite effect. Nice. At at nighttime where you can like have it, I guess, do a sunset. Nice. I don't use that feature very often, but for some people that might be really helpful because sometimes I like falling asleep with a light on. Mm-hmm. But obviously, I don't want it to stay on. So <laughs> it's a very convenient feature that will just like shut off automatically when you're asleep. I really need one of those. If somebody I needs, love um, it. If somebody needs an idea for like a Christmas present for me, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, the one I have is like a Phillips. Um, I picked it out, but my boyfriend got it for me for Christmas a few years ago, mm-hmm. and it was literally off of Amazon. And it like they're not expensive; like they're pretty cheap. Nice. If anyone like is having a hard time or they need to wake up early when it's still dark, mm-hmm. you need one of these alarm clocks. Because then you don't even have to throw on your big like overhead lights. Mm-hmm. You can just, you know, gradually get yourself going for the day. Love it. So the next tip, and this one is really hard. So I, I use the word try <laughs> in the point, And it's to try to stay as active as possible. And to like right in advance, like before the seasons even start to change, just try not to fall into a habit of putting it off because – Speaking from personal experience, once you start doing that, you will not get back on that train. And a really good way to do this because like, I don't know about you, but some days, even if like, I'm like, I should work out, I just don't have the energy for like a resistance training workout. Yeah. You want to do something like a little bit lighter on your body? Just honestly, just go take a walk outside. Yeah. Yeah. Just like honestly. Yeah. As long as you're moving for like around 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. It really does not matter what you do. You know, walking, as we've said many times, is super underrated. Mm -hmm. And if that's all you can muster up, that's fine. Like some days that that is a workout. (laughs) Yeah. And then it's kind of two birds with one stone with that one too, because especially if you go at lunchtime or before, you know, maybe you have like a little bit of time at 830 before work, you get some of the sun and some of that natural vitamin D. Yeah. So you're charging yourself and you're getting out. It's great. Mm -hmm. Speaking from personal experience, because I have tended to get really affected by this um, in the past, this year has been a bit easier on me, um, that I started to do a lot of hiking around December, January of last year. 
which obviously like November is harder for me, but December, January still isn't that great. And I found like just literally going, it helped so much. Like it really turned it around for me. So I know that sometimes it's tough to get yourself out the door, but once you are there, like you will start to feel a lot better. Yeah. And I think it just helps to be in nature in general. Like, you know, you get mm-hmm. lots of fresh air and just just a little bit more like peace of mind. Like it's it's really good for your brain. Yeah. To to get out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you agree with this one, but I had written it down for myself because it helps me, but just to let yourself get excited about something. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. I've been doing with my workouts. Um, you know, as everyone knows, I've been kickboxing for the month of November and I'm just coming to the end of that. And mm-hmm. um, by the time that this episode comes out, I'm going to be getting, uh, like you, Rachel, like just a, a month long membership to the Y mm-hmm. um, just so I can go swimming. Because mm-hmm. I'm even noticing now with kickboxing, like I love it, mm-hmm. but it's a lot of physical exertion yeah. uh, to do it. And once I do it, I'm like, this is great. But now that it's getting even colder, like my body is just like, okay, time to step back and do things that are a little bit less intense. Mm-hmm. So that's now where like my mindset's going like, oh, I'm very excited to go swimming. Yeah. Just to do something new and something that's not as like crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> on the intensity. Yeah, I I definitely think that that's great. And even um, exercise aside, just general day-to-day things, just getting excited about something in that way has really helped me. So like for a personal example, to help get me through, I let myself like look forward to the holidays. Yeah. So like for one thing, I'm like, okay, um, oh, I'm feeling a bit down, but I'm going to like wrap presents in two weeks. Which is like a silly, kind of like a silly little thing, but it does help with that looking forward Mm -hmm. to help boost my mood because otherwise I will be like, I will just fall into my little tunnel with my little hood up and be like, life is meaningless. (laughs) So it really helps. And it it, it is kind of funny that you say that. And I don't know if you want me saying this on the the show, Rachel, but like I would kind of remember that. Mm-hmm. a little bit like especially early on in our, our friendship when we were still like figuring each other out mm-hmm. how you did almost have that little bit of a, a switch mm-hmm. come the fall mm-hmm. where you were just like you're like no I'm just I'm staying in like I'm just not no nope. I'm like yep yep it's winter time and I'm just not my bubbly self anymore yeah and I mean I really wanted to do this episode because of that reason because like this is very near and dear to my heart it's not dear but you know I've come to accept it about myself and it's something that I'm like yep this just happens in November there are ways there's definitely ways to make it easier on yourself um I definitely was not very good at coping (laughs) at that time I think especially because like I was in school at the beginning of our friendship and Mm -hmm. like there is nothing more sad than a university campus during exams. Yeah, like you just had that added stress and pressure. Mm-hmm. So that would almost like just kind of magnify the sad or mm-hmm. winter blues that you were you were feeling at the time. Mm-hmm. And like in recent years, you know, you, you've kind of found ways to combat it a little bit, but you've also kind of talked about it more mm-hmm. and brought it to light. And yeah. I feel like that's probably helped you as well. Yeah, a huge lesson that I learned. And if, if any of our listeners don't take anything else away from this episode, at least take this. Don't isolate yourself and ask for support from your friends and family because that definitely, like you said, helped turn it, turn it around for me. Even just to say, I think um, I sent you a text about this last year where I said, okay, I'm starting to feel a little bit funky. It's mid-October just a forewarning and then you knew that it was happening and then you were there to help me mo- out more with it. Do you remember that? Yeah, because it'd be like, okay, well, you know what? Let's let's plan a day together. Mm-hmm. You know, like even if it was something simple as like getting coffee yeah. or whatever, like at least we just had something again to look forward to. And even for this year, we both booked the same day off work mm-hmm. in December and we're going to go to the spa for the day and just oh, like – I'm so excited. I'm so excited for that too. Like, But we're just going to have a day that, you know, we're both looking forward to it. 
Mm -hmm. Um, We get to spend time together. We get to relax. And then that's almost like a little milestone because the next thing that we get to look forward to in the next like two weeks after that are the holidays. Mm -hmm. Um, So it just really helps break up the long stretch of like short days and cold nights yeah uh just so we can kind of get get to spring again Mm -hmm. just leaning on your support network is the most important thing yeah I was just gonna ask like is that like the most impactful thing of how you've been able to kind of get through the winter yeah just I think um part of it was I always felt very by myself with the feelings like people wouldn't understand when I was originally going through them, but it was like I wasn't giving people the chance to understand really that once I let people in that I trusted, it just it made it feel um, like it was not so much of a weight on my shoulders and that there was somebody there to help me lift it. Yeah, and I think as well through you sharing, you also realized that you weren't alone Mm -hmm. in the fact that, you know, other people go through this too. Yes, which is very, very important because it's so easy to feel like you are completely like the only person that ever experiences this. Yeah, where I feel like if you can connect with people who are also experiencing that, there's just that great support again because you all know exactly how the other person is feeling. Yeah, yeah. And like this is a little kind of silly, but I feel like you're going to love this where something else that really helped along with bonding and bringing in my friends and family to support me on this was even on like days when I woke up and I was not feeling good, I would just turn on like a very happy playlist and just make myself dance around my room while I got ready for the day. Well, they say dancing is the best cure. I know. And I'm just like, I I don't even remember when I started doing it, but literally like any time of year now, usually it's Taylor Swift. I just have this distinct memory of me like dancing around my room at like six in the morning to the man. (laughs) And it was great. So that is another one just just to like help brighten up your day because obviously there's some times where like if you're in a bad mood, you might not be able to see your friend. So either like dance around to your favorite music or even like watch your favorite movie because we watched The Grinch yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oh, it made me feel so much better. (laughs) Yeah, right? Because it's so happy. So yeah, those are – that's one of my main tips. Do you have any other ones? I think that's kind of all the ones that I have, you know, huge advocate of the the sunrise lamp and just sunlight in general. And of course, like you really just have to try things out and see if it works for you. I think that's the main thing. You know, definitely reach out to someone if you feel like you are possibly suffering with seasonal affective disorder or even Mm -hmm. the winter blues. And we hope you found this episode helpful. Rachel, do you have anything left to say? I think you just covered it all right there. So let us know your thoughts on our Instagram. It is the tea with Laura and Rachel. And live like tea. And live like tea.